Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm taking a look at another high-grade Kyokai Senki kit. This one right here being the 172 scale Johound. And like I've said so many times before, I love these kits. If you haven't given them a go, I highly recommend that you do. They're like, they've brought high grade to a completely new level of awesomeness. And I particularly love what they've done with the grunts. Anyway, before we get into anything else, this video right here would not have been possible without those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you do want some Kyokai Senki kits of your own, link in the description. So getting right on into it with the aesthetics, and here's the Johound out of box, straight built with a little bit of panel lining. And this thing right here is an absolute slab of real robot in the best possible way. I adore this. All the time we see so many high grade kits of heroic suits that look over the top and crazy. This thing barely even has a head and I love it. It's got some weapons embedded in its shoulder-esque area and it just looks like a tank on legs. I love it and love it to bits. This shares a lot of design elements with the previously seen on here Brady Hound, but not as much as I thought it had. Even though the legs have a lot of similar aspects, it's still ridiculously different and a lot, well, more remedial feeling, feeling even more real robot-y. We've got a lot of square aspects to it, including all around the skirting armors. The head is one of the most unique heads I've ever seen. And I will talk a little bit about that cool sensor we have for the eye up in its head in a little while. We've got some great detail. Once again, like I mentioned, those cannons up in the shoulders. The hands, once again, looking great, just like the ones we would have seen on the Brady Hound. Once again, like I mentioned, this has been panel lined and it begs to be panel lined. I just love those circular little details and the fine panel lines we have here and there to give it a lot of nice surface detailing and the color separation on here is ridiculous as well. We've got a lot of nice parts overlapping each other, which gives us a real heavy duty look. I really love this thing. This is so cool. Seams and molds and all that nasty stuff is minimal. It's easy to clean up. This is a great building experience and it is solid as a rock. These high grade Kyokai Senki kits are so good. And once again, I feel the grunts are even better than the main amames like Kembu and all of those. This, honestly, this is a lot of fun. So jumping into some size comparisons, there it is side by side with the Brady Hound, which is a lot more advanced looking, a lot more streamlined, while still extremely basic looking. As you can see, the legs are very similar, but they're not the same. I thought there'd be a lot of reused parts, but there are not. Again, impressive. So as for some Gunpla comparisons, there it is side by side with the high grade Oryx 78 II. So you can see it's quite a bulky big bot. There it is side by side with a master grade. So as you can see, it is quite large. And finally, there it is side by side with a perfect grade, which is probably the closest scale Gundam you can get to what these are. So just imagine the Johound a little bit bigger. And that's the size it would be in actuality beside a Gundam. And finally, then there's the Johound up on the shelf for the shelf presence test. And as you can see, it's not going to be standing out too much. But then again, it is a militaristic grunt. The whole point would be not to stand out, I guess. But yeah, if you've got a high grade collection, it might stand out a little bit. But anything bigger and this might be a little bit lost in there. So now jumping into the accessories and here's the Johound with absolutely everything that it comes with, which is a simple little loadout. We've got some alternate options for using with the hands. That is two alternate hands, one per arm, I guess. And we've got a rifle. Let's check them out. So the hands in here are pretty much what we would have seen with the Brady Hound. First off, we have a pair of clenched fist style manipulators in here. We have the option of actually sliding the back of the hand up. So that can just slide up just like that right there, which allows it to be used as a knuckle weapon and also for it to hold on to the weapons that it has, or should I say, weapon, singular. The other hands we have in here are these widespread ones. Once again, the Johound right here, like the Brady Hound, has two thumbs, which is pretty cool. And the hands are actually kind of flared out in a way that is very, very nice. These are some pretty cool alternate hands. So next up in here is the rifle, and this is the exact same rifle we would have seen with the Brady Hound. So that is pretty cool that different mecha from the same faction will be using the same weapons. It makes sense, and these are nicely designed. We do have some stickers in here for the sensors or the sights. The grenade launcher down bottom is optional, so it can just be removed just like so with attachment points that look very similar to 30 minute missions. And the ammo magazine down bottom can actually be removed like so, which is always a pretty cool feature. And there we go, popping it back on in. Attaching the rifle in is super, super simple. It just slots on into the hand like so. What it says in the instructions about it is, this is an assault rifle for AMAMs officially adopted by the NEC forces. 
then says they can be used by amames by other forces as well, and that they're lightweight and easy to wield. If you're curious as to whether they can be used in the other hand because these are asymmetrical, yeah, they do fit in, and that's what it will look like right there, right now, right there. Yeah, it fits. So finally jumping into the articulation, and as for the build on this, these kits are rock solid. They always are. There are no polycaps in the design, so that does mean everything is plastic on plastic, so they are ridiculously strong. I love them. Anyway, from the head down. So as for the head on this, we've got mainly just an up and down. It can look up a whole lot, and it can look down to that point. When it is up, you've got a little bit of side to side, so it's not entirely limited. It is quite cool. On popping that off... There is a ball joint inside of there, so if you ever wanted to get creative, you could probably give this an actual head. And on the actual underside of the head, we have these two little parts. In the front here, we do have a foil sticker for the eye, which catches the light nicely. This actually, in an almost Zaku kind of way, is for controlling it, but not the same way. If you pull these both together, it actually closes this segment in the front like that. So let's see if I can kind of get this and kind of open it while you're looking at it and it can open just like so how slick is that and also when they are together like so you're actually able to shift its view side to side that is one of the coolest things i've ever seen in high grade i love that continuing on now with this thing's absolutely fantastic design and we do have a nice shoulder which allows the arms to move forward and back like so and this continues to be awesome by moving up like this so there's a lot of articulation to those arms once again, this may be a simple looking mech, but the technology in here is far from simple. We've got your standard arm right here, which spins around like so. If you're curious about the connection, it is a ball and socket, which gives it even more. And this shoulder section here is independent, can move up and down ever so slightly. There is that arm raised up all the way, but with that other part, it can raise about parallel to the ground like so. And we've got the full 360 spin. Next here, we've got the full spin at the upper arm. Next up, there is that bend at the elbow, so just beyond 90 degrees. And we've got that usual high-grade ball joint for the wrist, so full rotation and a bit of flexion extension. The design here continues to impress. There's the ab crunch to the front and back. Very, very nice. And the rotation is nice and seamless inside of the waist unit there. Very nice. As for the skirting armors, we've got a bit of a flappy, flappy round front. Doesn't really do too much. On the side then, the flap can move up and down. Can we rotate this? Nope, just up and down. And round back then, we do have a premium butt flap, which is always very nice. Continuing on with the nice design, we do have a dropping mechanism inside the hip. Let's see if I can pop that off, and that is what it looks like. Once again, very, very nicely designed right here. As for the kicks then, there it is all the way up to the front. Actually, if I drop that down i can get it a little bit higher so there's to the front there is out to the back blocked a little bit by that butt flap and finally then as to the splits no problem whatsoever next up we've got that full 360 spin at the upper leg popping off the leg for clarity and we have a nice knee bend here which separates that bit of armor and goes all the way to that point so that is very nice just a single bend but simple and effective like a grunt should be the little knee segment here can move ever so slightly. We've got a shifting piece of armor right here. And now checking out the functional movement of the leg when it's on the ground. And there it is all the way to the front, so not too bad, nice. There it is all the way to the back, so nice as well. And as for the side to side pivot, that's what we get, and not so bad. Down at the foot then we have this little bit of a cloy section around back, which I actually find helps balance it in some crazy poses. So even though the high-grade Johound is just a grunt, this thing can definitely bust a move. Once again, it is plastic on plastic, so there is no loose parts whatsoever, and I'm still blown away by just how good these high grades are. It can pose up a storm, surprisingly, for what, well, looks like it should be a brick on legs. So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and I gave the Brady Hound Platinum tier because it's as good as grunts get when it comes to high grades, and the Kyokai Senki line keeps blowing me away. This, to me, I actually prefer slightly to the Brady Hound. It's a little simpler, but it is rock solid. The colors are absolutely perfect, and this thing blows me away. So once again, this is a Platinum tier model kit. These Kyokai Senki kits are so, so good. If you like robots, if you like mecha model kits, and you haven't given these a go yet, I highly recommend that you do, especially the grunts. So far, they've been blowing my mind. Anyway, once again, if you do want some of your own, link in the description. Thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more model kit reviews, and I'll see you next time.
As always, this video and none of these videos would be possible without each and every one of you watching these videos, including those of you who are supporting me on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including Van Fon, Orgy59061, Lawrence Seahack, Kill Me Inc., Joseph Kukluk, Joe, Gunpla UK Limited, Global Frequency Studios, Forsetti, Caleb Engelhart, and Craig Jerry.